This is Ms. Rain going over the uh, pre-calc quiz number 6, 3.1, 3.2, taken on November 20th, 2019. Question number 1. Which function is represented by the data in the table? If you ever need to, take the horizontal and make it a vertical if that makes you feel more comfortable. If you notice the x values are adding by 1, and then on this side I recognize that I'm multiplying by 3, so it says which function is best represented by the data in this table. So I have y equals ab to the x power, exponential function, your a value is your y-intercept, and your B value is your common ratio. So my Y intercept is zero one. My B value is three here, my common ratio <coughs> to the X power. So Y equals three to the X power. My answer is gonna be a choice B. Question number two, what are the horizontal asymptote and y-intercept for this graph of function f of x equals 2 to the negative x power plus 7? We talked about how negative, or 2 to the negative x power, if you make it a fraction, you put it over 1. Anything with a negative exponent comes down. So you're left with 1 over 2 to the... Uh, x power here. And essentially what you have here is 1 over 2 to the x power. So if you take um, your table of values here and you're thinking about what's happening to our graph graphically, that one there uh, is being reflected over The uh, y-axis in positive 7 shows you it's being shifted up 7 units. So if you normally have a graph, let's say f of x is a b to the x power, your graph's going to look something like that, right? But... This graph is being shifted up 7 units from here and then swung over. So your graph's going to look something like that. Which kind of tells you that this point right here, this green here is the, um, the horizontal asymptote. Remember, the plus D value is essentially your horizontal asymptote. So that would be the plus 7. Now, the y-intercept was normally at 1, but if you add 7 to that, that'll be at 8. So your choice is going to be C. And if you put that into your calculator, let's do the parent graph first. So just 2 to the x and 2 to the 
negative x plus 7 There's a parent graph to the x power And then there is your other function g of x the red one so you can see how it's been shifted up seven units and then spun around the y-axis. Question number three. Which function is best represented by this graph? And you have uh, four choices here. And what I decided to do is call this one f of x. And my coordinates for this one I recognize are something like these are some very easy coordinates to kind of pick up. So zero, negative one and a half, one zero, two one, and then right three up three. So those are my values. And let's make it green. Uh-oh, green pen's dying. And then let's make the parent one. Uh, g of x. And you can use your uh, graphing calculator to give you some values. So again, I can see that the parent function is going to be uh, 2 to the x power. And then we're not quite sure what one of these looks like, right? And what you can do is you can actually plug in all of these. x minus 1, minus 1, 2 to the x plus 1, minus 1, two to the x minus 0.5 and 2 to the x minus 1. So here's the parent graph. And I'm kind of looking for the one that kind of looks like this green one. So if you graph the parent function, let's go ahead and do that once loading up all of those. Uh, 2 to the 0 power. Print 0, that would be 1, 2, 4, and 8. So I graph that 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, and then three, somewhere way up there. So it kind of looks like the graph has been shifted down um, a unit, not half of a unit. So I like those two. This one maybe not so. And then from the yellow, it looks like it's being shifted to the right one unit. So shifted right one unit, 
looks like this one, x, a little bit hard to see, but x minus 1, so shift in. Right, and this one is down 1. So that's what the graph it looks like. So that'd be choice A. And then you can even test the values. <coughs> If you put in zero here, zero minus one is negative one. Two to the negative one power is one half. One half minus one equals negative one half, one. One minus one is zero. Two to the zero power is one. One minus one is zero. Two minus one is one. Two to the one power is two. Two minus one is one. And then three um, minus one gives you a two. Two to the second power equals four. Four minus one equals three. And if you're in this table of values here, you can find the graph that actually matches the uh, the one that you have, 0, negative 1 half, 0, 1, 3. So that would be the red choice, which it would be A. Number 4. Write an equation for the graph way down here. So in this problem, you can take um, the two order pairs that are given to you, 0, 7. So I'm first going to work with this order pair. And then basically what I'm going to do is, um, because my two points are not consecutive, we can use systems to solve that. So y equals a, b, x. Let's see if we can zoom in here. And then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for a. Solve for a. Well, if I put in um, 0 up here and a y equals 7, that is just going to equal 1. So 1 times a or just a. So a is equal to 7. Now I'm going to use that, use A in our second order pair. So our second order pair was 3, 56. So same thing, Y equals AB to the X power. Substituting my values, 56 is Y. Now I can use my A value of 7 here. For this one right there. So that gives me 7b and then my x value is 3. And then here I can just solve for b and then I have an a and a b and I can write an equation. Let's write that solve for b. So I'm going to divide by 7. That gives me a equals b to the third power. To get rid of the power of 3 I'm going to take a radical or the cube root of 8. Three identical, three identical numbers that equal 8 is 2. So now I have b equals 2. And the third thing I can do is write an equation y equals abx. So I have an a value that's 7. That was the red. And the B value. It's 2y equals 7 times 2 to the x power. And that would be choice um, D. So a four multiple choice. That would be eight points and then two points for name and period. All right, question number five. State the transformations from its parent graph y equals two to the x power. Okay, so I can copy color code this. I see that one there. And so basically the first observation is you have a uh, negative sign in front. This is going to reflect over the x-axis.
Now the four, that four there is an A value. And that basically means you're gonna have a vertical stretch by a factor of four. Okay, here you have the plus three. So the third thing we have to do focused. There it goes. The third thing there is the plus three is not going uh, to the left, but it's being a horizontal shift. Three units left. And I have a silly phrase that can help you. Add to x, go west. West, west is left. And then the last one is your D value. So if you need to, you can always write these right above it. A um, two to the BX minus C plus D, something like that. And there's your letters. And then the D value is a vertical shift one unit up. And that's the second part of my silly phrase. Um, add to Y, go high. And how that works is if you just cover all that up, you'll see that you're adding to y, so that means you're being shifted up one unit. So four characteristics for that problem for the transformations for number five. Um, four points all correct, 3.75 missing one, three and a half if you're missing two. Question number six. You inherited land that was purchased for $500,000 in 2012. The value of the land increased by approximately 8.5% per year. Determine the equation that models the land, value of the land. Uh, we can use something like P of T equals, well, you don't have to use population ones, but. And the big idea is that basically what these look like is a exponential function. Y equals a B to the X power, right? So purchase for $500,000 is gonna be my initial. And then my rate is 8.5. Now, for a rate of 8.5, you're going to have to make that a decimal. So 8.5%. In some ways, what you're doing is you're dividing by 100. So 8.5 divided by 100 gives you a decimal point 0 0.085. And essentially what you're doing then is you're adding that to 1. So 1.085 is the same thing as saying it's increased by 8.5% a year. And then we don't have a t value. <clears throat> now, if you wrote something like y equals 500,000 one times 1 1.085 to the x power, totally acceptable. 
Question 1b. How is the approximate value of the land in the year... What is? <laughs> that would have been better. What is the approximate value of the land in the year 2020? So for time, we need to think about from 2020 from 2012. So that gives me a T is going to be equal to 8. So we can just put that in there. What is our population or profit or price of eight after eight years, starting at 500,000? 1.085 to the eighth power. There's my calculator rate equation. Looks nice. Let's put it into our calculators. Remember that there's no comma, so you can double check you have the right number of zeros. One, two, three, four, five. 1.085 to the little care button up there to the eighth power and then p to the eight equals nine hundred sixty thousand three hundred and two point one six nine so we can say approximately in in the year twenty 20 that the price of the land is $960,302.17. 6C. When will the land be worth $1,500,000? Support your answer with a graph. Okay, so should have just punched that into the calculator first. Let's clear all these out. $500,000. 1.085 to the x power. And then this one, I want it to be uh, 1,500,000. And then now I need to think about my graph. So I like to do this, so it might help you. You just need a visual, right? We don't know how much time it'll be, but I know that the x value measured in time in years we already know after eight years it's already uh, almost a million dollars so maybe max 20 or 15 years and then the y value your y is measured in money dollars and so this is going to be one million five hundred thousand and you already had nine hundred and sixty thousand there what I'm trying to get for you is when I change my window, because obviously if I press graph, let's see what happens. It's thinking when it's spinning there in the circle, but it's not going to see anything. So it's still graphing. Now it's done. You can press zoom, and if you go out, you're going to have to press it a lot. You can try this one zoom fit zero i went from the bottom let's see what happened all right you get something uh, i didn't really fit it right so if i go to my window x minimum you could put in negative one i like you could put zero but i like putting negative one x max 20. And the X scales just basically means what happens for every of these tick marks. So let's just say count by fives. Y minimum, this is zero, so I'm gonna put negative one so I can see it. And then the maximum, I'm gonna put in, um, you can do something like two million. Because I know this is a constant, so that graph is just gonna come out way over there. Just double checking my zeros, and then we can press graph. Here is our function. 
starting at 500,000, growing exponentially. This is when is it going to be 1.5 million? And so basically what we're doing is we're looking for the intersection. Let's write that, find intersection of basically this equation, 1,500,000 equals 960302.17. Nope, that's not right. 500,000 to the 1.085 to the 8th power. So let's go ahead and do the intersection. So second cal second trace, then the intersection. It's already on one curve. First curve, it's blue. So you just press enter. It automatically goes to the second one. Now, if that doesn't happen, you can just press up or down. And then now it wants a guess. So I'm going to do it exactly. And it gives me a um, time of approximately 13... Point four seven years. So there's a couple of things you can say. You can say after thirteen point four seven years, comma the land will be worth one million five hundred thousand dollars. Or, I think super more accurate is, when will the land, you can just add 13.47 to uh, 2020. So you can say, the land will be worth $1,500,000 between 13.47 plus 2020 gives me um, uh, 2012, sorry. That would be 2025 and 2026. Question number seven. An adult takes 400 milligrams of ibuprofen medicine. Each hour, the amount of ibuprofen medicine in the person's system decreases by um, 29%. So again, just think about it. This is like a pill. They're measured in milligrams. And think about what happens when you take medicine. It just um, it gets it disintegrates. It falls apart. So it tells you it decreases by 29%. Write a function of the medicine in terms of time. So M of T is... Now, if you need to, you can write a formula that can help you. The starting point is 400 milligrams. And my rate is not 29 or 0.29. Remember, it's less than, it's less than um, 100%. So you're going to subtract from 100, and this will give me 71%. It's really, um, so kind of like, you know, Black Friday sales are coming up and things like that. So... Instead of saying you get 29% off, really you're paying 71% of the original. And then that just is 0.71. So 0.71 is my rate. And then T is the amount of time. How much ibuprofen is left after six hours? Six hours is a measurement of time. So we can just put all that into T, right? So I'm going to get M of 6 equals 400.71 to the 6th power. So there's your calculator rate equation. And this time, I'm going to put that into my, my equals because I'm going to have to graph it later and get table values anyway. So why not just save ourselves some time? 400, I'm going to put in the function 0.71, the x power, and I can just put it in there. 
go back to my table and go down to six. Or you can just put that into the home screen. So after six hours, we should have about 51.24 uh, milligrams of ibuprofen in their body. After six hours, there is 51.24 milligrams of ibuprofen left. Question number seven, complete a table of value. So you can just, we already had it. Now think about this. In my table of values, I'm probably not gonna use the negative numbers because you just had a pill that's 400. So can you go backwards in time? An hour before it was growing? So the negative numbers actually don't make sense in this problem. That's why in exponentials, you really think about it, we're only in quadrant one. The graph in D is in quadrant one because you only have positive time. So I'm just gonna write those down. Zero, one, two, three, four. 484, 201.64, And if you want to, you can go down to what we just had, so 72.164 and then 51.24 after six hours. Then let's make a graph. And make sure to label it. So this is my y-axis and the y's are essentially um, your amount of milligrams, let's write that. Amount of ibuprofen measured in milligrams. And I'm going to start off by, let's see if we can count this, 100, 200, 300, and 400. And then my x-axis is time, and its unit of measurement is hours. So we can do something like one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have at zero, 400, one at 284. Remember those are fifties. Two and 200, three and 143, uh, four and 101, 572, and then 6, maybe around 50. So let's go ahead and sketch this. Should be curved. And there you go. Good luck. Math. Say it again. Our math.